Hi, it's Paul Anderson. In this podcast, I'm going to talk about the blended learning cycle. Last year, I gave a TED Talk on classroom game design and talked about how I turned my classroom into a video game and how I was using blended learning to do that. It was a great year, but I think I kind of strayed a little bit too far from what I know, and that is the power of the question and the power of learning in a science classroom. And so I've returned to that using the blended learning cycle. So this right here is a picture um, from around 1900. It was, uh, it was made in France and basically they're predicting what a classroom will look like in the year 2000 with students plugged up to wires and books being fed into a machine. My classroom doesn't look like this, uh, but it has changed quite a bit in the last five years. Before I get into my class, I want to give some thanks out to people that inspired me over the summer to rethink uh, my rethought classroom. First is Ramsey Masalam. He's come up with, uh, he's a chemistry teacher and has come up with this idea of explore flipped apply and he was one of the first flipped uh, teachers and basically is applying the learning cycle to that and I grabbed a lot of inspiration from that. Uh, I grabbed some inspiration from myself. My capstone project in my master's degree was on directed inquiry and I've added myself and a lot of directed inquiry back into my classroom. I love this tweet from Dr. Tay. I followed him and, and we had a brief email exchange and I learned a ton from what he had to say. Reflections on my TED talk. Um, I watched Daphne Kohler's, uh, Kohler's uh, TED Talk on what we're learning. She talks about Coursera and what we're learning from online learning. Big thing I took away from that is the importance of letting the students do a lot of that peer grading, putting the students more in control of that learning. Um, I went to China this summer, which was an amazing trip, and I learned the importance of, of rigor and, and the students there and the people are so interested in education. Um, and so I tried to bring back a lot of that here as well. And even the word everything is a remix comes from Kirby Ferguson, this four-part series uh, talking about how movies are made up of other movies and music and all these things are kind of remixed together. And so I want to thank all of these people and others, of course, who inspire me to try new things. And hopefully I can give a little bit of inspiration to some of you to try something new. And so if you're not familiar with blended learning, basically what it is, is it's taking the compelling parts of online, mobile, and classroom learning and then just blending them together in a classroom. So using that techni technology in a powerful way. You might be less familiar with the learning cycle. Basically, there are five E's and it's a great way to learn science. You start with an engaging question. Students are able to then explore, experiment. You then explain the phenomenon. You expand upon that and then you evaluate. And so it's a great way to present material and material uh, to be learned. And so if we were to put those together, we have the blended learning cycle. Um, I always come up with acronyms so I can remember things. And so the acronym I use is QUIVERS. And so that's Q-U-I-V-E-R-S. Um, and just like there are six arrows in this quiver, there are six parts to my blended learning cycle. And so it begins with a really good question. And so right here, we've got Euler's disk. Uh, Euler's disk is a really large disk. Um, and basically you give it a spin on a mirror and it's just going to keep spinning. And that's how I started my class this year. I just started the spinning in the front of the classroom. It's neat because it just keeps going and going and you can go get like a, a glass of water and come back and it's still spinning. The kids are kind of mesmerized by that. And so you got to start with a good question, a phenomenon that they really don't understand and they try to make up predictions on how that might work. Um, so we would call that the question, but we'd also call that the hook in learning. You want something that really gets their interest and gets their attention. Um, next, you want the students to investigate. You want them to experiment. You want them to use inquiry learning. And so basically, if I were to give them, and I did this, give them the, uh, the Euler's disc, they find that it's really, really heavy, and it's got a rounded edge on this side. And if you look at the mirror, it's parabolic. And so when you look at it, your reflection is just huge. Um, and they can kind of see that in there. And so you let them experiment. Uh, maybe they could spin it on a table and see if it's going to spin as long on a table as it's going to on the mirror. And so you do investigations. And so in my class, this is starting with investigations, but it'll work into inquiry. You then have a video, and I'm using video podcast to do a lot of the direct instruction. What's nice about the videos is it frees me up to do other things. Um, it frees me up to review with the students, and I'll get to that in just a second. Instead of just giving a classroom lecture, the students can watch it, and they watch it independently when they get there. Next, we've got elaboration. So if we're going back to this Euler's disc, maybe you could give them reading on it. And now we get into diagrams and explaining the physics of inertia and um, and the importance of this um, 
this parabola and the mirror. Um, next we go to the review portion. So basically what I do here is I meet, oh, Euler's disk just stopped, I love that end part. Uh, I meet individually with the students or in small groups and then I ask them questions to check their understanding. And they can't go on to the S or the summary quiz until um, I'm assured that they know what they're talking about. And so basically when they're done with that, then they go to a summary quiz and that's going to test them on what they know from back here. And if they don't understand it, then they're going to go back. And so basically I have a number of these learning cycles, 55 in AP Biology this year. Um, and then after we go through like five of these learning cycles, then we'll have a good old paper, pencil, sit down, unit test. And so they have to show what they know. Um, but all these are kind of mastery learning as they move through it. And so it begins with a question. Sure, let me show you level one from this year. This is where we started. So they started with question one. Basically, they were presented with data. This is from the grants. Uh, beaks of the finches on the Galapagos and we saw natural selection taking place just over a few years and so I present them with the data and then I ask them to explain it and so they type up their answers um, after they're done doing that with all of these things they're kind of self grading it so they're going to look at what the quote unquote right answer is and then I can survey all of their answers and then start to bring that back to the classroom uh, next thing is an investigation in this case, the investigation was called the beak of the finch, so they have a box for all of these little labs. So they go grab the material, so there's some beads and beans and different forceps. In this one, they're timing themselves to see how long it takes them to move 20 beads from one to another. That goes into a huge Google form, and so we have a big spreadsheet of over 100 students' data in there. And then you start to see relationships come from that, and it's a wonderful way to do labs. All your data should go into a shared spreadsheet. The power of the numbers is super important. Um, next thing is a video. So I had a video on natural selection. This is like eight minutes long and I'm giving that direct instruction of the important parts of uh, natural selection and how we could apply what we've already learned so far. Next step is elaboration. For me, this is a lot of reading. I think it's really important that students learn how to go through the textbook and understand what they're reading. And so not only does it have the sections from the book that I want them to read, but the big points that I want them to pull out of that. Um, I've got extra problems, for example, on Hardy Weinberg. And so this is the elaboration point where we're actually going into more depth and more understanding. And we're applying what we saw and what we played with a little bit ago. Next thing is a review period where I meet with them. And so this is what I'm doing in class. I'm meeting with students and they don't get to go on to the summary quiz until I say, okay, that's good, you understand it. Give yourself points for that. And so they're doing all the grading up here, but I can ask them really good probing questions. And so, for example, today we were talking about genetic drift. We're talking about um, homologous structures. And so I can ask them really good questions. So I can say, okay, what is biogeography? And I, they can't just read me an answer. They got to tell me what they think it means. And then I can ask them questions like, okay, there are polar bears near the North Pole, but not near the South Pole. So how does biogeography bio explain that? Um, and the first few questions, the first few kids I ask questions to, they're not as good. But after 100 kids talking to them, I can get to really good questions like, okay, dragonfly, mouse, hummingbird, which of the two are more related? And so they'll always, a lot of them say, surprisingly, dragonfly and hummingbird. And so then why? And we talk about homologous structures. And so I can get to probing questions. We're spending a lot of the time around a whiteboard where I'm drawing out scenarios. Sometimes it'll be groups of three or four, and then I kind of spread the questions out to make sure they know what they're talking about. But for me, I'm getting really good at asking probing questions. And for them, they have to actually show me they know what they are talking about. Because I don't think you've learned something until you can explain it to some else. And so this R of quivers has been really important. Next we move on to the summary quiz. Summary quiz is basically a quiz over all of this material so they can get used to the question and how hard the questions are. It's a timed quiz. It'll bring back different questions. And so basically this is a way for them to check if they understand what they're talking about. And so when they're done with that they could try it again. They can try it again. Um, but basically, um, they don't get to just game the system over again. Eventually, they run out of, uh, of tries, and then they have to come talk to me again. And so again, this is my, um, my mnemonic quivers. Basically, what we're talking about is question, investigation, video, elaboration, and then finally, review and summary quiz. And so this is, it seems to be working great this year. And I really feel more involved in the classroom. And I've kind of returned to some of those roots um, of starting with a really, really good question. 
Because if you're a science teacher, that's the most important thing. Let's start with the question and let's figure it out. And so uh, I hope that's helpful. I'd love to get feedback on what you're doing in your classroom and, and what you think. And so thanks for watching.